violent attack at a Worcester. We have breaking news. Officials giving an update on the evacuations at Pentucket Regional Middle and High Schools in West Newbury. The odor has been contained and is, 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 are we still trying to fix it? We're, we're trying to locate which unit it is actually coming from. It's a very large building, several units, several different designs of units within the building. Uh, we're working with the school maintenance staff, uh, construction teams, and also um, technicians as well are getting called in to uh, assist them. How dangerous is that? How dangerous is this? It depends on the leak, depends on the amount. Um, again, this came in as an odor and uh, prompted the, the immediate evacuation of the building as it would be with any odor uh, or smell. Does that mean the refrigerant was leaking into the science lab and some organic? Uh, that's where the initial reports came from. Again, we don't have a definitive answer. So, a little ignorant here, what's refrigerant mean? Is it something that's a gas? Is it a liquid? Or what is it? So it's, it's a component of the heating and ventilation system. Uh, the science, I can't give you that answer because I don't know. That's why we call them specialists. So. Can you just give a, give a quick recap overall? What time did all this go down and how many students were impacted? How many students were treated on scene and how the whole process worked? Sure. So uh, 941 was the time of the call that came into West Newbury Fire. Um, we have uh, mutual aid agreements with Groveland. So Groveland Fire also responded at the same time, um, as did uh, EMS. Uh, from the area because there were reports of students with um, uh, presenting with illnesses, uh, nausea and uh, lightheadedness. Um, hazmat teams were called, EMS task forces were also called because of the sheer number of students that were presenting with these uh, symptoms. Um, I believe it was 42 that were uh, checked out, released to their parents, and then four were sent to area hospitals again as a uh, precaution. But they're expected to be okay? Yes, haven't heard anything uh, to to dispute that. So. Okay, so no alarm would have been tripped to trigger a response in this particular case? No, so we, uh, we have um, fire alarms and carbon monoxide detectors in the building, uh, and those obviously are specific to smoke, heat, and carbon monoxide levels, um, nothing else. Um, so no alarms activated, uh, but the school resource officer, having been given the information about the, uh, the incident, ordered the evacuation of the uh, building. So is a refrigerant leak considered a hazardous material? Yep, so we, we, that is something that should be contained within a system. And when it is out in the environment, um, there, is, there needs to be a reason why that is. And in this case, we believe that it was a leak. Uh, where the leak's coming from, we don't yet know. So what does that mean for school tomorrow, for students and parents? We don't know yet. Um, we're trying to get to the bottom of where it was coming from, and then we can make a further determination after that. And the superintendent can certainly speak to that too as well. So. Yeah, so that's a great question because that's the question a lot of our parents and students are going to want to know. I and mean, first, again, I'm just thankful that the school resource officer was able to get the call that evacuation, get those students to screen for the medical piece, and those students who needed to go to the hospital to get treated. That's wonderful that they were able to get there quickly. Um, but for terms of school tomorrow, and we asked a question earlier about are students going to be able to access what's in the, what's in the building because we have staff and students that all their materials are still inside the building. So right now we're going to do obviously be as, as cautious as possible and we will wait until we have everything patched up, fixed, whatever it is, until that problem is resolved. We're not going to have people back in the building. So it could be like a snow day decision where we make that decision tonight whether or not there's going to be school tomorrow or if it'll be something that we'll have to call it off because it's not yet repaired. Are you happy that they found the list of problems and identified? Are you happy that they identify what the issue is? Sorry, say that again. Please that they've identified what the issue is. Sure, yeah, I mean, so that's a refrigerant one, I would say it's, you know, so you know that wasn't something that we were doing inside the building that caused it, it was something that was beyond our, our control. Um, so that's always good, but I mean, it, it, I think the the response, the mutual response, the, the hazmat just did a wonderful job processing with us, communication was outstanding. Uh, you have so many, you can see there were a lot of different groups here, and I think the incident commander just did a tremendous job throughout the entire process. Is this the key to the new building? So, I wouldn't be able to answer that question. I, I, so I think it's one of those things of when they find out what it is, then I'd be able to answer that question if it was something that, go ahead. And, and your response as superintendent in terms of getting the messages out to parents and students, would that work according to plan? Yeah, sure. So within the time of, oh, geez, probably 
951 is when I think I sent out a first message, and there were five messages that went out to faculty and staff and to parents from 951 to like 1230. So the challenge there is, of course, parents are at work. And of course, you're dealing with older students who so are fortunate there, but still, some parents have wanted to come and pick up their children. They wanted to know what's going on. So when you know the initial information, getting out that information is important. And then once you get factual information, which takes time, getting that information out to parents so that they know what's happening and that they know their children are safe is, is paramount. Well, I don't know. I've built a house before, and there's always going to be a lot of problems. I think the, the, the things you're always looking for are safety. Safety is always going to be the number one piece when you when you have a new building. Like, is there anything is there anything secure? Are, are our students and, and staff going to be able to come in, do their jobs, and do it without any worries? I think that's always going to be the, the, the primary question. And in this instance, you know, it, was a, it sounds like it was some kind of leak somewhere in, in that area, probably in that vicinity. So just locating that now, having an HVAC person locate that and make that repair so we can keep going, that, that's... So when you say to parents that want to feel safe about sending their kids to a brand new school that is having problems with a leak? Sure, I, I think what I would say is, it's a, first, I'd be very happy. I, I have two children myself that were in the school, so I'm very happy that they took the proper protocol. They followed the procedure, the students left, exited, and they isolated what, that, what, what it was, and that it's going to be identified and repaired. I think that is, that, that, that to me as a parent is, is critical. But parents should, parents should feel safe sending their kids to a brand new school? I think parents should feel safe sending the kids to almost any school, but a brand new school, I don't think it would, I would think of it differently than I would an older school. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.